untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black green blob deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon featuring four copies of Consuming Blob, the five mana mythic rare creature from Midnight Hunt whose power and toughness depend on the number of card types in our graveyard with toughness getting plus one. So in standard there's seven different card types including creature, land, instant, sorcery, artifact, enchantment and planeswalker. So in standard it can grow up to a seven eight. Fun fact in historic you get one additional card type with tribal so if you can get an altar of the goif in your graveyard consuming blob could potentially grow up to an 8 9 and then at the beginning of our end step we create a green oozed creature token with that same adaptable power and toughness so consuming blob is very powerful if we can enable it by putting enough card types in our graveyard and if we take a look at our stats from our deck here we can see a very nice split of card types with eight creatures six instants and sorceries seven artifacts five enchantments and planeswalkers and 25 lands and then we have a lot of ways to mill ourselves to put cards in our graveyard and we've got a bunch of cards that of course naturally end up in our graveyard as well to enable our consuming blob so let's dive right into it here at one mana we've got two copies of a neverwinter dried a creature we can sacrifice for two mana to search up a basic forest to put on the battlefield tapped putting a creature in our graveyard and helping us ramp towards our more expensive spells then we also have two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst as a sorcery speed removal spell, killing a small creature. Can also kick it later to take out larger creatures and planeswalkers. At two mana we've got more removal with Infernal Grasp, an instant destroying a creature at the cost of two life, useful for taking out creature lands, which can dodge our sorcery speed removal. And then two copies of Witherbloom Command, a sorcery that lets us choose two modes. We can mill ourselves for three and then return a land card from our graveyard to our hand. So milling ourselves, of course, are very useful for consuming blob. We can destroy target non-creature non-land permanent with mana value two or less, useful for taking out the various class enchantments like Ranger's class. We can give a creature minus three minus one until end of turn, giving us a bit of removal, or we can drain the opponent for two. So we get to choose two modes and we're typically going to choose the first one as that will enable our consuming blob. Then we've got two copies of the Meat Hook Massacre, a legendary enchantment that when it enters the battlefield gives each creature minus X minus X until end of turn. And then it sticks around saying whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life. And whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we get to gain one life. So a very powerful addition from Midnight Hunt. And because it is legendary, if we play a second copy, one will automatically end up in our graveyard. And it's also an enchantment that we can randomly mill to give us an extra card type in our graveyard. Then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Letter of Acceptance, an artifact that can tap to add 1 mana of any color, helping us ramp. And then later we can also sacrifice it to draw a card, putting an artifact in the graveyard. Then we've got the full playset of Roiling Regrowth, an instant that makes us sacrifice a land to search our library for 2 basic lands to put on the battlefield tapped. So this will put both an instant and a land in our graveyard and helps us ramp into our 5 drops ahead of schedule. Then we've got two copies of Eccentric Farmer, a 2-3 creature that when it enters mills three cards from our library and then we may return a land from our graveyard to our hand. So it can be a nice two for one while milling more cards into our graveyard. Two copies of Dried Survival as a sorcery that returns a card from our graveyard to our hand and also has Flashback for five mana. So if we randomly mill the Revival we can still make use of it and maybe return a blob from our graveyard back to our hand so we can replay it in case we happen to mill a copy. And then at 4 mana, 3 copies of Isika's Chariot as a powerful legendary artifact. That's a 4-4 vehicle when it enters makes a pair of cat tokens. And when the chariot attacks we create a token that's a copy of target token we control. So it can also potentially make more blob tokens with the consuming blob. It gives us an artifact as an extra card type that will end up in our graveyard eventually. And then it's also a great combo with Ren and Seven as we all know by now. Then at 4 mana we also have 3 copies of Binding the Old Gods, perfect in a consuming blob deck, as it will destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls, giving us removal on the first chapter. On the second chapter helps us ramp, searching up a forest to put on the battlefield tapped. Can even search up our 2 copies of Woodland Chasm to give us some black mana fixing. And then on the final chapter gives our creatures death touch and will end up in our graveyard as an enchantment, so an extra card type for consuming blob. 
Then at 5 mana, 3 copies of Renan 7, as we mentioned, very powerful alongside Isika's Chariot, if we can curve those into each other, as we can minus 3 right away, creating a green Trifoe creature token with reach and power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control. Then we can also use the plus 1, enabling the Consuming Blob by revealing the top 4 cards of our library, putting all land cards revealed this way into our hand and the rest goes into our graveyard. The zero ability can put more lands into play, and then the minus 8 can also be game winning, returning all permanent cards from our graveyard to our hand. And of course we're going to have a very full graveyard in this deck, and then we also get an emblem saying we don't have a maximum hand size. Then of course our full playset of Consuming Blob, and finally two copies of Professor Onyx, another powerful planeswalker that will help us put more stuff in the graveyard. As a plus one makes us lose one life, then we look at the top three cards of our library, put one of them into our hand and the rest into our graveyard. Then it also has a Magecraft ability, saying whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, we get to drain the opponent for two. The minus three acts as removal, making the opponent sacrifice a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. And then the minus eight can also deal a ton of damage. And then the mana base also has a few interesting additions, including two copies of Treasure Vault. This is an artifact land, so it counts as two different card types, which means if we sacrifice it to Roiling Regrowth, we get three card types in the graveyard at once while ramping. And then later in the game, we can also sacrifice Treasure Vault for double X and then create X treasure tokens. So that can potentially give us a bit of a mana boost. Then we also have two copies of Field of Ruin, which can blow up opposing non-basic lands, so a nice way to deal with creature lands while putting a land in our graveyard. Same goes for Evolving Wilds, a land we can sacrifice to search up a basic, which will put a land in our graveyard, also a good combo with Witherbloom Command, so we don't need to get lucky by milling a land into our graveyard. And same goes for Eccentric Farmer, really. Then our two copies of Woodland Chasm, mainly here for the Binding the Old Gods synergy, then mana fixing with a black green pathway, then two copies of Lair of the Hydra as our own creature land, which can be a nice win condition after ramping a bunch, and then we've got six basic forests and five basic swamps. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Some early removal, some ramp, into Nasika's Chariots, and sure, we'll play turn one Dryad. Ideally pick up another untapped land, so we can play Chariot on three. Or we can kill a Florahedron, prevent the opponent from ramping, since it doesn't look like I'm gonna play Chariot on three. So, I'll offer the trade, opponent probably takes it. And then... Yeah, let's Wither Bloom Command. And I think I still hope to mill a land here. Alright, we found one. Another Florahedron. And there's our Blob. So... If I sacrifice my Dryad, play a tap land, I'll be guaranteed a Consuming Blob next turn, which seems worth it, because then Chariot could eventually start copying the token too. It's not going to be enormous right off the bat, but it will start growing pretty steadily. So that seems like a fine plan. Our opponent with a Renan 7. At least there's no Chariot in play to worry about, and we can eventually Infernal Grasp the Tree Folk. But they will get to plus Ren at least once here. Yeah, that seems fine. And then as soon as we play an instant, that will put an extra card type in our graveyard. So next turn I could Grasp plus Chariot. Put in playing kind of the classic version with the Storm the Festival. And there's Yasharn. can still sacrifice our lands at least. Not sure if it stops anything else in our deck. Don't have any treasure tokens.
All right, so I think our plan is pretty straightforward here. Let me double check card types. Yeah, Grasp will make it up to a 4-5. So I don't really want to put Consuming Blob in harm's way necessarily. But that would require them to double block. But I do want to Grasp before attacks. Otherwise my creature that gets blocked by the tree folk is kind of going to waste. So I think that means I'm only attacking with the blob token and not the blob itself. And kind of force him to chump with Yasharn. Or the Florahedron. And then I'll play a Chariot. Which can make more blob tokens. Alright, we'll see what the opponent can do here. Maybe they've got their Storm the Festival at the ready. They can make another Tree Folk token. Losing Ren. Which is currently bigger than our blobs. And they play another one. Okay. Can still kill Ren and Seven. And Treasure Vault actually represents an extra card type if we sack it to Roiling Regrowth. Although that's probably not going to make a huge difference here. Could also sack it to itself, of course. So I think the plan is pretty simple. Animates. Attack Ren with probably, let's see, everyone. So Chariot is definitely going to die, a token's going to die. I could send one cat at their face, I guess. And still have enough to kill Ren and Seven. Copy the blob. And then if the Chariot dies, I can play a backup. Opponent's jumping. Okay. So my blobs are very large. I think I might want to hang on to a Seeker's Chariot in case the opponent has a Sweeper somehow. Not that this build typically plays Sweepers. Nah, I'm just gonna go for it. No fear. Get a Solidifier advantage. Skyclave Apparition's fine. Yeah, our opponent seems in trouble. Can get rid of chariots. And now that we already have an artifact in the graveyard, there's no need to Roiling Regrowth the Treasure Vault. I can sack a different land. Okay, Farmer can maybe grow the blob some more. And get back a land. And yeah, blobs reached maximum size at 7-8. And this should be lethal. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn 1 Neverwinter Dried here. To help us ramp, turn 3 Farmer, and then hopefully turn 5 Professor Onyx. And then we'll have a nice filled graveyard in case Consuming Blob shows up or we can find one with our Planeswalker. So hopefully our Dryads survives our opponent's turn 1. It does. Get to sneak in an attack for one. Now Hive of the Eye Tyrant is potentially a problem since that can exile stuff out of our graveyard. It's gonna be a Vengeful Strangler for now. And yeah, I guess I can fetch with Evolving Wilds to guarantee an extra land for Eccentric Farmer. 
and then plates. And good thing we played Evolving Wilds first. Might have actually been correct to fetch a Swamp. That way I had the option of potentially playing Massacre for one and still playing Evolving Wilds. But I'm fine with a block here and then we'll just sacrifice a farmer to the Strangling Grasp. Opponent makes me discard two. Yeah, I think we hang on to Professor Onyx and our lands. And then Drive Survival can be flashed back if needed. So, can hit for two. And then we'll do the same as last time. Now fetching a swamp. Alright, get that same Evolving Wilds back, so definitely got our value here. And there's Consuming Blob, already a 6-7, and Evolving Wilds will make it a 7-8, the largest it can be. Now that being said, Ponon does have a bunch of mana up, so they could kill Blob at instant speed, in which case we don't get the token. So I think I would rather play Professor Onyx first. And then I'll keep the Farmer on defense as protection. Alright, just a deadly dispute for now, that's fine. Open your books to page. And we'll take Lair of the Hydra. Alright, so Blob now is 7-8. And Farmer can attack since we're not blocking a menacing hive anyway. We're starting to diversify our threats. We've got a Planeswalker, a Creature, a Creature Lands, which can dodge Sorcery Speed Removal. But ideally our opponent taps out, so we at least get to make the token from Consuming Blob. As Blood on the Snow destroys all Planeswalkers. And gets back a Vengeful Strangler. Which I can kill here with Thirst. Is that worth it? Yeah, otherwise they're gonna enchant my blob, which could be annoying. So, let's do that first. Attack for two. Play blob. And then I'll play Lair of the Hydra. Make our token. And sacrifice farmer. All right, hopefully they don't have another sweeper here. Otherwise, Dryad Survival could still get back Consuming Blob or Professor Onyx. Graveyard Trespasser, also quite effective, as that can exile stuff out of our graveyard. Probably starting with the Dryad Survival. Nope, goes for Renan 7. Alright, we get to untap another Dryad Survival to draw. So... I think I start by attacking. Opponent will have to chump. Let's see, if I animate my Lair of the Hydra, could make it a 5-powered creature, not quite enough for lethal. Plus her opponent has a bunch of mana untapped. So yeah, I'll start by attacking. And then if they chump with Trespasser, I'll be happy. Uh, they did have Infernal Grasp, fair enough. Opponent still chomping. And then... I could revive... something I can play right now. Or I can pick up something expensive to then try to play next turn. Although at that point I might be better off flashing back Dried Survival instead of using the one from hand. And... Yeah, as much as I like Consuming Blob, I think I should diversify and pick up a Planeswalker here. So another Blood on the Snow is not as backbreaking. I could keep Wilds in hand in case of another discard too, but this also powers up my lair. So... Still seems fine. Opponent's got their own Professor Onyx to take out my token. And 
we will be able to animate Lair of the Hydra to finish off Professor Onyx and still do something else, hopefully. Yeah, I guess not quite enough for my own Professor Onyx, but I can revival back maybe the Ooze. Yeah, who seems probably like the pick here. And then now do I play out my land? Opponents at 11, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, the 10th land doesn't make a huge difference, so I think I keep this in hand now. In case of another discard effect. Alright, another Professor Onyx. I probably have to take out with Lair. Alright, it's gonna be a Turgrid. Fine target for Professor Onyx. And then I can still sneak in an attack with Lair. Open your books to page 17 or something. Alright, Deadly Dispute gonna sack a response. In which case, I feel pretty good about sending in the Hydra for two. And then they could finish off my Onyx with their Hive of the Eye Tyrants or Soul Shatter. Hopefully no discard two. Alright, so now Renan 7 plus Consuming Blob. And then I'm kind of interested to plus with Ren, so we don't put too many creatures in play at once. Could also keep a Field of Ruin as an answer to Hive of the Eye Tyrants. Opponent is at 8, so technically I could get there with Lair of the Hydra, but instant speed removal is quite punishing. So maybe... I can strike a bit of a balance here, make a token, and then play Field of Ruin and not play the Blob yet. Until they're tapped out and we feel safe to play the Blob and get a token immediately. Another Soul Shatter. In that case, I think I feel comfortable playing the Blob. Although then I guess we still run into the uh, Blood on the Snow problem. So, scratch that and just uh, get in there with Lair of the Hydra. For four here. Alright, so our opponent needs to answer my Tree Folk. And then we can still follow up with Consuming Blob as well as present Lethal with Lair. Alright, Blob is gone. But I can revival it back unless Hive attacks, which it does not. Commands can also take out Disciple. So we've got a lot of options, I think. Killing Disciple, draining them for two. And then I can still attack with a lair big enough to kill the Hive, as well as the Tree Folk, and our opponent packs it in. GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Can play a letter on turn 3 and still play Blood Chief's Thirst afterwards. 
So two early removal spells into an Asika's Chariot. Opponent blue-white appears to be more controlling. Alright, make that Asper. Put on deciding whether they want to counter the letter. Bounces it back with divide by zero. Well, hopefully we can keep hitting our land drops here. Pwn and Dulsko shields down for sciences. Would be a nice window to resolve a chariot. As we also see Hive of the Eye Tyrants, which can threaten our graveyard somewhat. We'll get back Evolving Wilds to get an extra forest. Alright, so not the ideal start, but uh, at least we've got land 4 now. Opponent foretells a card. Could be Epiphany, could be a counter spell. Start by attacking. And then I guess we're okay with Chariot getting countered. Yep, that's a fine trade. Next turn we can try another chariot, or we could try to double spell letter plus maybe a drive survival, get back Professor Onyx. Keeping up Infernal Grasp to kill the Hive. Also gonna be a relevant sequence this game. Ah, Sunset Ravelry making two one ones and drawing a card is acceptable. So they might have another divide by zero in hand. And I should be able to go letter into a four mana play if they don't counter the letter. So that feels pretty mana efficient. And then probably fine to attack with a farmer. Alright, we've got our field of ruin now to answer Hive. Not the best hand in terms of having all these removal spells when our opponent is not presenting threats. Hall of Storm Giants also. Good target for removal, and there's the Fairy. Which can plus to untap some lands maybe. But we have tools to kill the fairy between binding and a kicked thirst. Don't worry. Run on seven, good two. So opponent does have two mana up, could be disdainful stroke, negate or drawry disruption. Otherwise it is tempting to run on seven, make a tree folk to copy with chariots. And then if this gets countered, I'll still have infernal grasp available at the very least. Yeah, it's worth a try. Alright, that resolved. And then we'll go after Teferi. Probably gonna see a sweeper next turn cleaning up all my creatures, but we still have chariots and an active Renin 7. With Grasp, a decent answer to the hive. More cunning than I thought. The fairy survives. Could have made sure to kill the fairy by grasping one of the tokens, but not sure if I wanted to do that here. Opponent's got their own field of ruin. Ah, Vanishing verse deals with Ren. Also exiles it, so we can't revival it back. And then I imagine there's still going to be a sweeper here, otherwise our opponent's in trouble. Right, it's going to plus. Second here, a second there. Who 
Who's counting? So they've got six men available. And they're just going to pass. All right, that's surprising. Well, there's no settled wreckage to worry about. So if I were to try and survival, probably get encountered, but yeah, we can still go for it. And then I'll crew the chariot with maybe a tree folk. To spread out my attacks a little bit so I can send two small things at the ferry and copy the tapped token with chariot. Alright, Soul Shatter kills the chariots. Is acceptable. So maybe they wanted to wait on their sweeper for a turn. And then. Yeah, they could still have removal here, so I'll send two tokens at the ferry. I do have the mana to drive survival back a chariot and play it. Could also play Meat Hook Massacre for zero just to have it in play to drain the opponent if they kill my stuff. And then maybe revival back a Liliana. Sure, let's do that. See if this resolves first. This way, if they tap out for a sweeper, I can maybe resolve a Liliana next turn. Right, Test of Talents, we'll exile that for good. And our opponent also got to look at our deck and hand. So if we suspect a sweeper, I could play Meat Hook Massacre on zero just to drain them for five down to nine. But we don't have a creature land to keep up the pressure and our hand's kind of bad. So don't love my spots. Could draw with the letter, see what we pick up. And if it's a swamp, I can still play Massacre. All right, a backup chariot's not the worst. So now is the time for the Meat Hook Massacre. That's also the advantage of drawing with ladder if we hit another land. These would have been 7-7 to dodge an opposing Meat Hook Massacre. Maybe four mana for a card draw effects. Memory Deluge. Well, they can't cast a Doomscar. So whatever sweeper they find here is not going to be too devastating. Shadow's Verdict is also not on the table. Said so most they can deal with the small stuff. Or they need multiple spot removal spells for the large tree folk tokens. So our opponent did set themselves up to wipe the board and then stabilize, but it looks like they're still missing the sweeper. And yeah, they have to pack it in here. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, our hand seems fine. Can regrowth into hopefully turn for Blob or Ren, with a Massacre to clean up afterwards. Facing an aggressive goblin stack. So great matchup for the Meat Hook Massacre. Think I wait on Blood Chief's Thirst until a more impactful goblin shows up. Evolving Wilds must be for planes. I have seen white splashed in goblin decks before for Rally the Ranks or Showdown of the Scalds. But we're just going to regrowth here. Hobgoblin Captain's fine. Still dies to Massacre. Opponent is tapped out, so we don't need to worry about removal on Blob. And then a Massacre for one or two should be quite effective. There's a bandit lord. 
All right. That's going to require a little bit more work. I think I still take the six. Or, well, I guess... Hmm. Yeah, I can still take it, and then... I can go Thirst into Meatook Massacre for three. Alternatively, let's see. Yeah, I guess that's the play here. And then I'll attack first. My oozes survive. And we get another 3-4. Next turn I can start plussing with Ren to maybe put more stuff in Graveyard. Or sacrifice a letter since we don't have Artifact yet. And it's going to be pretty tough for the opponent to survive. Another blob. Mm. Having a guaranteed... Four power ooze, or I can try and get lucky with Ren. Alright, five six consuming blob, and we even hit a treasure vault. So let's get in there. Opponent's gonna be chumping. And we get to make another token end of turn. Yeah, goblins can be a scary matchup. Especially for on the draw, if the opponent has an explosive start. But uh, yeah, the second caller here slowed them down a little bit. I think they missed a land drop too. And uh, the payoff, which is rally the ranks, not quite what they need in this matchup. Their best hope is to kind of go underneath us and punish our somewhat slow deck. but should be able to just swing with the team. And could have even added another card type with either Letter or Treasure Vault. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is reasonable, assuming we can find land number three. Which we did. Opponent on pretty controlling blue deck from the looks of it. So if we want to play around another disruption, we could go with the instant speed regrowth as opposed to a letter of acceptance. Sure. Also represents using field on the Hall of the Storm Giants. Ah, there's a disruption. And then resolve chariot, maybe. And divide by zero gonna deal with that at the cost of their treasure. Okay. Opponent found teachings to draw two. So this might be the Aldrin's Epiphany deck trying to copy it to take multiple extra turns. I could go for Blob, although it's still vulnerable to three damage removal spells. So I think I'd rather go with Chariot then and play around Disruption too. Could get Disdainful Stroked. It does not. Okay. So not expecting too many targets for Binding. Or Blood Chief's Thirst for that matter. Field of Ruin can destroy my Field of Ruin. Alright, we get to untap. So in that case... Let me turn on Chariot's attack, see what happens. And then maybe play Blob 
if they destroy the chariot here. Iteration to copy their next spell and maybe a burn spell to kill the chariot. Frostbite times two. Yep, yeah, that resolves. So now that we also have artifact in the graveyard, do I want to play the blob? Still dies to burn your house down, whereas I could eventually have it survive. The alternative, I guess, would be play Ladder of Acceptance and Field of Ruin their hall, which is still reasonable. Right, and divide by zero. I probably wanted to play my land first, so if they tried to Field of Ruin my Field of Ruin, I could have responded still. But on the other hand, if I don't play the land, they're more likely to counter the letter because they think I might not be able to Field of Ruin their hall. And there's a Teachings, draw two. So they're quite likely to have an Epiphany in hand. Let's go after the hall. And attack. So we have a bit of pressure in play. Don't really feel inclined to tap out for a blob if it's still gonna die to burn your house down. So let's play the letter first. And then... Probably just pass. Yeah, not a great matchup for Binding or Thirst. Opponent's gonna find some prisoners. Revealing a Planeswalker, so if they play that one... We've got targets for removal. Run on seven, sure. So now we have to think about whether or not we want to sack the letter. So let's say I don't. Next turn I have nine mana available. Which is not enough for Blob, Binding and Thirst. But it would be enough for Blob and Binding, although more are likely to just Thirst a token for one mana and then play Blob. And after killing Ren, it's going to be above 5 toughness to survive Burn Your House Down. So in that case I'm okay sacking the letter. My own Ren. Start here. Take out Ren, sending both cats. And now Blob 5 6. Hopefully resolves. Alright, so they'll need multiple cards to answer the blob. End of turn, Royal bouncing the token. Although it's unkicked, so they're not drawing an extra card. And our opponent passes. They were one mana off copying an Epiphany here, but they didn't foretell it either, so maybe they just don't have the Epiphany. Either way, I'm probably gonna cast a Planeswalker here. And then... Let's go for Professor Onyx and see if that resolves. Can maybe grow the ooze some more. Find Infernal Grasp or Blob number two. Let's go with Blob number two. And attack. Could be a double frostbite as well to kill my blob, but they probably would have wanted to cast that in response. Alright. 
It's going to be Magma Opus instead. Pretty good. So they can pressure my Planeswalker with it. If they can also deal with the token once again. Which they can. Into the Royal. A good answer to the token from Renan 7, which is probably why it's seeing more play now. And then Pyre plus a 4 damage attack deals with Professor Onyx, but yeah, still leaves our Consuming Blob, generating value turn after turn. And 6, 7, 8, 9. So if Ren finds a land, I could also Blob, but I'm pretty happy to bind the 4-4 four four token. So let's start by attacking. See if this gets countered. Could also go for a Seekas Chariot. I don't think I want to blob just on the off chance that they can, you know, deal with the board with multiple sweepers. So going either Chariot or Ren diversifies better. And I guess I'll go with Chariot because that does set up the play of play my Ren and copy the Tree Folk token right away, which is a nice way to recover from a sweeper. Plus we'll also have the blob token to potentially copy. And getting to play around a Jory Disruption is an extra upside here. So is it finally time for Elrond's Epiphany? Opponent hasn't found a single copy yet. Going through almost half of their deck. It's gonna be smashing, okay. That is a way to deal with my blob, I guess. But now they're pretty tapped out, so the run play of uh, copying the tree folk is live. Hit you for eight. We'll put them to one here. And get a card back. Which is probably going to be Field of Run. Right, so that can deal with another creature land. Like this Hall of the Storm Giants as our opponent explodes. Sweet, so we got pretty lucky to dodge Alrun's Epiphany, which they would have been able to copy to potentially take multiple extra turns and kind of combo off. But if we can keep their creature land in check, they wouldn't be able to deal a ton of damage in those extra turns, which is a situation we want to avoid at all costs. So yeah, we got to see our black-green blob deck in action. I built a deck to try and make the biggest blob possible, as consistently as possible, and we got to make a 7-8 multiple times, so I'm satisfied. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.